Good morning. This is the lesson for Wednesday, the third day of Shvat. So we're all in the middle of chapter 19. We learned yesterday about the Pintaliid, the Neshama. That spark of godliness that is in us, in our soul, that connects us with Hashem, with God, in a way that nothing can tear us away. Because this is something that is above logic, is connected with the in the chachma of the godly soul, the wisdom of the godly soul, that is beyond logic, is connected at this just the neshama sees godliness and, and nothing, when push comes to shove, nothing can push it away, that feeling that the neshama has. So let's again begin with the tzedakah. And So uh, in this chapter, in this uh, lesson of today, Dalt Rebbe addresses the question, why then does it not affect so many of us? In other words, if you have an ashama, if you have, if your soul is there, feels it and sees God, the chachma of the nefesh, the wisdom of the nefesh, sees Hashem and cannot do anything else, and how come it does not affect us in our, our daily lives. We live our lives not always following exactly what Hashem wants. And here the Alter Rebbe says that, yes, it is a love that we have to Hashem naturally by nature that we inherited from our ancestors, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, that bond that we have. But it is concealed. It is hidden. It's called the Ahava Mesoteras. It is that godly spark that is in us is in a state of exile in our body. And Al Rebbe explains that there is the difference between holy versus unholy. Holy, the definition of holy is nullification to God, selfless. Unholy is about self. It doesn't feel necessarily doing bad things, but it's about self. It feels itself a self, a self and uh, a separate entity. And therefore, the more you live in this world, in a materialistic world, the more coarse you become, and the more self-conscious you become, and 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 you're. It's all about yourself. Even the good things you do is also. It comes from a, from something that you want to achieve, to accomplish. So this love that we have may be hidden, and it is hidden, except that it can, it can come and it can become revealed at certain points. So let's see what al Rebbe says inside in today's lesson of... Uh, the third day of Shvat. Says the Alter Rebbe. Vezo klal bechol sitra de kedusha she'ein oy elama she nimshach me chokma she nikro koydusha elyin. Now this is the general principle in the whole realm of holiness. Holiness is the is only that which derives from chokma. Holiness in Hebrew is kedusha. Kedusha is only what is derived from Chachma. Chachma is the wisdom. As we learned yesterday, the wisdom is it is the pre-logic. It is the, the, the idea connecting with the very essence of Hashem. This is called the Kedusha Kedusha Elyon, supernal holiness. So the word Kodesh refers to Chachma, while Kedusha refers to any manifestation of holiness as derived from Chachma. So as Chachma represents nullification of self before God, so only those matters that manifest this character of Chachma may be said to possess holiness. Those matters in, in which 
this characteristic characteristic characteristics is lacking, lack of a holiness as well. And Al Rebbe continues speaking of Chachma. So the Chachma is a bottle be metzius be oir ein soiv baruchu amelubash boy. It's very existent is nullified in the light of the blessed Ein Saif, which is clothed in it. It's clothed in the Chachma of the godly soul. And it is not a thing apart, as explained earlier. The word Chachma comes from the word of Koyachma, the power of Humility, the power ma means what? It's like, what is it? So therefore he says the faculty, this faculty is called Chachma, which consists of the two words, Koyachma, the power of humility and abnegation. So this is the idea of Chachma. And you say, what am I? Nothing. Com all, completely nullified to Hashem, and that is what the sense of the godly soul, what it feels, truly nullified, that, and it feels that there's nothing else except connected to Hashem. Says the Alter Rebbe, and this is the uh, total, complete opposite of the selfish klipa, the other side, the shell that conceals the godliness. This stands in direct contrast to the Klippa and Sitra Acha from which are derived the souls of the Gentiles, which is materialistic. The soul, of course, is spiritual, but it's still, it comes from a way of separate entities, the Avdin Legarmayu, who act only for themselves. Even good things that people do, there's always a reason why you want to do it. And the reason is whether it makes you feel better or whether you believe in something uh, to be altruistic, but ultimately you feel that this is the right thing and this is makes you makes you want to see a better world. So again, selfish doesn't necessarily mean it's it's for me. It's something for, for my physical me. It could be also for my spiritual me. And as uh, that they say, saying, give, give. And as Esau said, feed me. In order to be independent, an independent being and entities. This is separate from God. As mentioned earlier, that Klippe is, is a separate, distinct entity, far removed from God, in direct contrast to Chachma, whose nature is humility and self-mullification. And now says the Alter Rebbe that for that reason, any entity which is not holy not nullified to God is considered not alive. It's considered dead because life is God. Anything which strays away from God, anything which feels separate existence, it is what is separate, separate from Hashem. So it removes the life as well. So it's not truly alive, meaning the real life, which is connected with Hashem. That says the Alter Rebbe, "Velochein ikroi meisim." Therefore, they, those of the of the realm of Kalipa, the shell that covers conceals godliness, they are described as dead. Ki achachma techay, because it says the wisdom, the chachma gives life, because the chachma is receiving life because it's nullified to Hashem. Uksiv yamusu v'loy bechachma, and is written also. They die without wisdom, meaning that death is a direct result of the lack of wisdom, lack of chachma. Therefore, he says, the nations that receive their life force from klipa, 
are considered dead, naturally alive. And the same thing says the Alter Rebbe also when it comes to a Jew that lives a life which is a selfish life, may not be a bad person, but in, in a sense of between people, between humans, but sometimes it's not of their fault that they are not in, in line with what God wants us for what is our mission in this world. Fulfill God's will, will mitzvahs, Torah, listening to the Torah, helping people. But for whatever reason, people who are who, who are not in living their life in this way. So they grow up in, in, in a life which is concealed of godliness. And the more it's concealed, the, the thicker the shell it becomes. And before, and as, as explained, even such people, even people who are totally not aware of godliness, when push comes to shove, and then when the nefesh, when the godly soul is in, feels in danger, they will be ready to give up their lives. That's what we learned yesterday. But before then, the, the soul is in exile in them. That's what it says. Just as the heathen nations are called dead, so too are the wicked and the sinners of Israel. But only before they are put to this test of sanctifying God's name. Says so what happens? That love that they have to Hashem, that the natural love is hidden; it's concealed, and the wisdom of the godly soul, that level, is in a state of exile in the body. That's what he says. For the faculty of chachma in the divine soul with the spark of godliness from the light of the blessed Ein Soif that is clothed in it, they are in a state of exile in the body. And this is the in exile within the animal soul of the realms of Klippa in the left part of the heart which reigns over them and dominates their body. As we learned in the earlier chapters, that this is the struggle, the battle between the godly soul and the animal soul. That's control over the body. Who controls the body? So as the more a person allows his selfish and, and material desires to control him, the thicker that shell becomes. And it becomes... And the godly soul is in the exile in that body. This exile of the faculty of Chachma, while the animal soul dominates the body, this echoes the esoteric doctrine of the exile of the Shechina, that God, so to speak, is in exile, as mentioned earlier. And therefore, says the Alter Rebbe, this is why this love that each and every one of us has is called Ahava Mesoteris, a hidden love. For this reason, this love found in the divine soul, whose wish and desire is to unite with Hashem, to unite with God, Hashem, God, is the fountainhead of, of all life. This love is called the hidden love. An apparent contradiction in terms. You see, when you say about love, what is love? Love is about a, a manifestation of emotions. Emotion that is revealed. And here we say it is love, but it's hidden. So where is the emotion? But it's a love that is hidden. It is a potential. In potential, it's there in everyone. Not only in potential, it's there. 
but it's concealed by the sackcloth, as he calls it, of the animal soul. For it is hidden and veiled in the case of the transgressors of Israel in the sackcloth of Kalipa. And from their Kalipa, there enters into them a spirit of folly which leads them to sin. What does it mean, the spirit of folly? The spirit of folly, the foolishness that tells the person, it's okay, I can live my life, I can have be connected with God and do whatever I want anyway. It's not going to affect my connection to God. As our sages say, they remark, a person does not sin unless the spirit of folly enters into him. So that is why this love is called a concealed love. The question remains, if this is a concealed love, then how does it affect us? How? What's the point of having love if, if, it, if it doesn't affect us? So that's what we're going to learn tomorrow, that that love also can be revealed at certain points. In certain cases, this love comes and it becomes revealed. So we'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Hashem.